guys, today I am doing the swatch test for my chameleon markers. And I have here the um, additional set of 30, the new colors. Um, I do not own all of the original 20. So if you're here looking for that, unfortunately you're out of luck. And I've already done a few videos with the chameleon markers. And I also did a review of these markers a couple years ago on my blog at natasuit.blogspot.com. You should be able to find that underneath my alcohol markers subpage. So just a quick overview of the chameleon marker itself. What we're going to be focusing, at least for right now, is not the blending or blended color, but rather color from the brush nib and from the bullet nib, because sometimes with some markers that does differ. And so we're just gonna go ahead and start with BV2 Lavender. And I am doing this swatch test in the same book I do all of my alcohol marker tests in, a Strathmore Mixed Media Pad. And I do that for consistency. So we're gonna start with the brush and they recommend we use a light hand. And these are fiber tips, they are not bullet nibs. And I mean, uh, foam rubber, sorry. And then we're gonna go ahead and label this. Let me grab an alcohol proof marker. So if you're following along at home, a Copic Multiliner or a Sakura Micron would both be good choices for labeling this. And you want something that isn't colored so we're going to use a black Sakura Micron in 08. And as you guys can see, it's already beneficial to swatch as there is a significant color difference. So we've got BV2. Lavender. Now we're doing VO2. And I'm being very careful with how I put my caps back on. And then we're gonna do BR for brush, BU for bullet. And I'll just zoom in so you guys can see the colors. And again, there is a pretty fair color discrepancy. I know sometimes it can be hard for companies to get a color chip that really adequately reflects their color. And you double zero. And if you're interested in these markers, you can find links in the description for below in the description below for where you can get them in sets and in the big set. And I think uh, Chameleon actually offers these open stock now. I think when I I first started researching into them, I was delighted to see that they were finally open uh, sold open stock. And you zero. But for up-to-date information, because that's just off the top of my head from the last time I researched them when I was ordering the Chameleon Tops through Indiegogo. Um, for up-to-date information, you should keep an eye out for the comprehensive blog post that I will release at the end uh, when I've, you know, really played around with these and really put them through their paces and have done probably a few field tests, etc. Really want to give them a chance since they are so different from other alcohol markers and I feel like I didn't really give them a fair shot. I feel like I had a bit of a bias when I reviewed them for the blog two years ago. It might have been three. And I've got the box set up in the easel formation. 
So that is why the box is designed sort of unusually. It actually forms an easel. My only problem with that, I think it's a great idea. I really love when companies make uh, packaging that is meant to be reused, that is meant to continue with the life of the product. Um, my only problem is it takes up a lot of space, but these markers take up, they're pretty, pretty bulky markers. But the whole point is also that um, you don't need to own as large a collection. I think there's only 50 total markers, plus their blender pin, which I don't own, and their black line pin, which I do own, and it's somewhere. Um, it was sent to me, actually, in like an art snacks. So I do need to dig it up so I can have the whole collection, or at least all I own together. And I can't seem, I own somewhere the set of five primaries, and it's uh, it's somewhere. I don't. It's with my the other alcohol markers that I don't regularly use, but I don't want to give away, and I don't remember where I put that. So when I find those, I'll pull them out and we can do a comparison because I think they've added some new features to these pins to help prevent them from drying out. And I have a feeling I'm going to end up buying um, a few more browns since uh, skin tones are important to me. And we, you know, we have our very pale skin tones and taupe is actually a pretty good one. Um, but we may not have nice darker skin tones. I know they have a larger range than this. I just don't own all those. And I don't own any of those um, in any of the prior sets so I won't feel if I do end up liking these I won't feel bad buying those as well and I also never really played around with these too much with other alcohol marker brands I know they're compatible but I never really hit on a technique for using the two together um, because that was when I was reviewing alcohol markers using a different style of review and I wasn't as thorough as I am now So I am excited to sort of give these a whole new lease, a whole new shake. And Chameleon is a company in the UK. I think they also do, um, they also do color pencils, but I'm not, I think, yeah. Pretty sure they do. Again, you'll have to check the blog post for like comprehensive information. Using the American spelling of gray. G-R-A-Y, not G-R-E-Y. It's interesting. And this set came with quite a few replacement nibs, both for um, the actual main unit as well as the blender cartridge and something that's nice that is new is that when you uncap these there's actually a cap in between the blender um, uh, cartridge and your marker so that it doesn't your blender doesn't dry out and that is an improvement from I believe the first version of the markers. And just for disclosure, these were purchased out of my own pocket. Um, and they were purchased because, uh, well, for a few reasons. I hadn't really given them a fair shake, like I said the first time. I was seduced by the Chameleon Color Tops Kickstarter because it really just seemed like an, an innovation in alcohol markers. And I often complain that uh, companies keep making the same markers over and over and over again. Like uh, different companies keep knocking off what works and aren't bringing anything new to the field and Chameleon is trying to bring something new to the field. So I felt like I I had approached that review with a lot of bias and I also approached that review with um, sort of expecting these markers to behave exactly like my other alcohol markers and I think these probably benefit from being approached as sort of a unique product that happens to be alcohol based. So I'm going to try and uh, 
limit how much I bring from my past alcohol marker experiences to these markers and try to learn as though I've never used markers before. So I'm going to be watching tutorials and you can find out which tutorials I watch again by checking out the blog. I'll link them there so you can follow along if you think what I'm doing is interesting and you want to try it out yourself. Now we're on the second row. This cardboard is to help keep these markers from shifting all over the place. It's kind of ugly, but it's functional. Uh, shifting all over the place until you put your original 20 in or until you build up the full collection. So I do appreciate that while it is not pretty, it is functional and they really are under no obligation to make something expensive that would be attractive if that, but ultimately defeats the purpose of what they're trying to do because they're trying to sell us they want us to own all the markers which is fair their business all right so pk2 and also um i did a big survey to find out what potential backers and backers uh would be interested in seeing from me and more alcohol marker tutorials and reviews was a popular like the number one answer so i am definitely trying to oblige and instead of reviewing endless aliexpress knockoff markers um i thought i would revisit something that i had kind of treated unfairly pk4 peony pink Peony pink. And this swatch is going to be my reference as I work with these markers. Because I am not entirely familiar with them and the color caps are not 100% indicative and I'm just not familiar enough with them to remember the little idiosyncrasies in which, you know, um, which colors reflect correctly and which ones don't and how they differ. And I will definitely be covering the color tops in depth as well but i do want to familiarize myself again with the regular chameleon markers before i break those out too much and since i invested so much in this uh, i'm really going to give it you know a fair shot in learning how to use them because i'm stuck with them now i have 30 of these plus 20 color tops Although I do wish, they do feature removable nibs and they do, this set came with the tweezers, which is nice. Um, I do wish I had an option for a foam rubber nib because I'm just really not a fan of um, felt fiber nibs, especially for brush, pin, slash marker stuff. It just doesn't have the flex. And in the packaging, they claim this is to give it a more painterly feel, but I do watercolor as my primary medium. I have a watercolor comic, 7-inch Kara, and you can read that for free now at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. So I spent a lot of time with watercolor, and I'll tell you, a mushy brush is not number one when I think about watercolors and uh, felt fiber nibs tend to get mushy fast. And there is another fairly prominent alcohol marker company that is UK based and that would be the Spectrum Noir Company, and that's Crafter's Companion. Uh, and they do color pencils, and they also do watercolor pencils, and I believe you can see reviews for quite a few of their products here on this channel. And also at natosoup.blogspot.com.
And I apologize for the shadow that I am casting. Again, if you want um, nice, clear photography, check out the blog. And you know, I complain like all the time when watercolors are named sort of um, feel good hippy dippy things that don't really reflect the color inside. But it doesn't bother me so much when markers are named dumb things like mellow yellow or most of these are actually pretty good um, because there's burgundy, vermilion, tangerine, but then you have like dark sage and evergreen, which is kind of like, eh, and then lagoon, which is another kind of, eh, because depending on where you live, your experiences with these things, they may be different colors. There's variation in the color. So I guess that's why I have kind of a problem with naming things by names that don't like green apple. Like this isn't really green apple. This is more of a celadon, which is also kind of one of those made up names. I know. Um, but green apple tends to be very, um, almost uh, fluorescent. And real green apples are more saturated and intense than this. In fact, this color here, dark sage, at least going by the color chip is what I would think of as green apple. But we're not really gonna, we're not really here to, whoa, that's dark, that is a dark color. All right, much darker much darker than the cap. Um, we're not really <laughs> going to um, complain and debate, spend a lot of time on the color names. I just, I know I talk about it a lot. And we're almost done, we have six left. And then I'm going to follow the blending guide and do blends for each color, which is going to take forever. And I don't know that I'm going to record all of them. I will probably record the first and then the last. That's going to eat up a lot of paper. So I may switch papers for that, which I apologize. Um, I know that's not, doesn't always help with color accuracy. I might use a big plate of uh, Strathmore 500 series plate Bristol because I do marker on that or I may use cardstock. Um, I do marker stuff on both of those. Okay, three to go. And then I have to get smart about how I want to swatch the color tops because basically the color tops replace the clear blending, colorless blending chamber. So you mix color into color. And we have 30 of these, 30 of those. Our blending combinations are pretty huge. That's one of the reasons I was so excited about them. And they allow, theoretically, from what the videos show, they allow for really smooth color blending, color um, gradations, which while possible with, say, Copics or Prismacolors, it's just, it's a lot of work. And uh, sometimes you just wanna be lazy or sometimes you don't have enough skill to make it work every time. So, you know, that's fine. There's no point in beating yourself up when there's a product that will help you achieve what you wanna achieve without having to spend two years learning how to do it when it's not even something that might make your life any better. In fact, I bought it so I could do crazy gradations like pinks into greens, which is very, very hard. For me, it's almost impossible with al regular alcohol markers um, because it tends to turn muddy and it might, it might turn muddy. It's, it's the amount of blender and alcohol solution just kind of mutes the colors down if you work it too much. And I'm hoping that with these, that's not going to be the case, but I don't know. So I'm excited to find out. I haven't been, I mean, I, you know, I do get excited about products. Um, but I'm really excited about it 
first time I've been excited about a specific alcohol marker thing in about a year. So that is the initial color swatches. Let me zoom out for you guys. For the 30 piece additional chameleon color tone set. So I will see you guys in a bit where we do our blending. Okay, art nerds, we're going to do a little bit of blending. So I'm going to demonstrate the first uh, color on camera, pulling up my guide right here. And then I'm going to do them the rest off camera just to sort of save us both some time and some sanity. Uh, but I will check in with you guys to of course say goodbye and also show you what the whole page looks or rather what the what it looks like when all of them have been tested. So I have here some Strathmore plate Bristol. Let me see if I can pull out a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. And I've got my blending guide. And I think I'm going to I've already done the zero. So I think I'm just going to uniformly do 30 seconds because that'll give us an idea of what the colors look like. Well, maybe even 35, no, 30 seconds because this is going to drive me nuts doing it for that long. And we're going to do the good old fashioned one Mississippi method. And fear not, if you think you missed something, you can check out my blog for photos to get caught up. So we're going to do, we should do both the brush and the bullet. That would be the smart thing to do. So we're gonna stay consistent. We're gonna start with the brush and we're gonna unkip, uncap this. And to do this, we touch it together like this. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, 13 Mississippi, 14 Mississippi, 15 Mississippi, 16 Mississippi, 17 Mississippi, 18 Mississippi, 19 Mississippi, 20 Mississippi, 21 Mississippi, 22 Mississippi, 23 Mississippi, 24 Mississippi, 25 Mississippi, 26 Mississippi, 27 Mississippi, 28 Mississippi, 29 Mississippi, and 30. Okay, that could not have been right. So, we're gonna try this again. The longer you rest the mix, mixing chamber on either nib, the more toning, I think, instead of holding it horizontal, we probably need to hold it so that the toning solution can flow into the nib. So we'll do that again. It doesn't actually specify in the directions. Let's do it this way. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, 13 Mississippi, 14 Mississippi, 15 Mississippi, 16 Mississippi, 17 Mississippi, 18 Mississippi, 19 Mississippi, 20 Mississippi, 21 Mississippi, 22 Mississippi, 23 Mississippi, 24 Mississippi, 25 Mississippi, 26 Mississippi, 27 Mississippi, 28 Mississippi, 29 Mississippi, and 30 Mississippi. That's the ticket. Hmm. Hmm, that's a lot longer than they promised. So that is 30 seconds. And now I think I finally hit the, yeah, now I hit the, the so 30 seconds is shown as this. This is 30 seconds. Let me go ahead and mark where I started. Yeah, it's a good thing I switched papers. So 30 is definitely too long. Let's do 15 to be consistent. And I'm gonna write this down. 30 sec, bull, 15 seconds. Oh, shoot, Tola. I left a cap like that. That's not good. Let's see if I can get that. Well, that's okay. This might be the problem, we'll find out. May have to switch that out. So now I gotta find where I put the cap. Recap it. Uncap this. And we'll try it again. 
1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi, 5 Mississippi, 6 Mississippi, 7 Mississippi, 8 Mississippi, 9 Mississippi, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, 13 Mississippi, 14 Mississippi, 15 Mississippi. And the bullet nib feels pretty dry, so it's almost like the marker is going dry, which is a little disconcerting. Okay, we will recap the special cap. And we're going to label this BV2. Go ahead and grab a photo of this. And I'm going to or I'm not gonna grab a photo, there we go. Uh, I'm going to work my way through all 30 colors, so that's going to take a fair amount of time. I will check in with you guys, though, when I am completely finished. So something negative that I notice I keep doing is I keep leaving one of these two plugged into the blender cartridge like it's its cap. Um, which I don't know if it negatively affects these markers or not, um, but it is probably not a good thing and it is probably something you should try not to do. So I'm bringing this up so that you're aware that it's very easy to forget to do that because it clicks in with the same um, sort of click that you get from the other two caps. So just a heads up guys. All right guys, so I have swatched all 30 colors, which took quite a while, honestly. And there's a few things I noticed. Only one color, BR4, changed shades significantly. And that's something that sometimes happens when you add colorless blender to certain reds, certain browns, certain violets even, is you get a fairly significant shade shift, sorry. What's funny is that the um, original color is more, is closer to the plastic in the cap than the color that's straight from the pen. And I also noticed that the brush, I mean the bullet nib tends to run really dry. I mean over and over and over again. And it does get a little more juicy as the blender runs out of the nib. And here is the second sheet. And I will have scans of both um, color corrected for accuracy up on the blog. So if you can't see everything that's on the page, make sure you check out natosoup.blogspot.com um, and check out the alcohol markers section. And if you like alcohol markers, if you're interested in markers in general, that is a great place to read loads of in-depth reviews and find lots of tutorials on how to use alcohol markers. So that was my swatch test for the 30 color set of Chameleon Color Tones. I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope you found it useful. If you did, do me a solid and share this video with two friends. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I have many more videos in this Chameleon Marker series coming up. So this is by far not the end. And don't worry, I will get to the Color Tones tops soon enough. I just wanted to do some pretty thorough testing with the regular Chameleon Markers. So for links to where every, links to where you can buy these and some of the other products used in this review, make sure you check out the description below. And I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.